description I put is empowering genitals. And that's a bold sort of little title here. So I guess I'm inviting you now to just to speak a little more into what we're going to be discussing over the next, I don't know, 30 to 40 minutes. What, what, what topics are we going to dive into here? Because I'm really excited. We've got some juicy content to deliver mm -hmm. um, in terms, and specifically for women as well. And I know I can add my piece for the men, but um, yeah, mostly catering and putting the focus on women. Mm, absolutely. Okay. So when I was feeling into this, what mm -hmm. I was feeling was um, it was a lot to do with the emotion of shame, which mm -hmm. um, to me, like it's often really connected to sexuality um, yeah. and our physical body and the way we feel about that. There's, there tends to be a lot of shame around that. So when I was thinking of empowerment, empowering genitals, it came from my business, which is Yoni Empower, um, which is helping women to reconnect with their sexual centers, um, but specifically their yonis or their genitals, their vagina, and to connect with that in a more loving and present way. So, right. I mean, that works for men and women. But I know I sort of mentioned to you when we were chatting about this earlier that it's like for men to have never sort of touched or looked at their genitals, it's almost unheard of. But for right. women, it's actually not that uncommon. Um, mm. Probably more so with older women than younger, but then the younger women tend to have quite a, a dysmorphic sort of like a, quite a, um, a negative relationship because of what they see in media and in pornography with, within specifically their genitals, but then their body in general. So um, my sort of thought was if we discussed a little about this to see what people sort of if they had questions, comments, where they're at with it. Um, but just kind of brought up some of these topics that have charge, we might be able to get some power back to the people, you know. So um, corporations yeah. use this kind of shame we have around our bodies and especially our genitals and sexuality to market us things we don't really need. So, yeah, it's a mm. way of... Mm. Yeah, so it's a way of giving back the power to... Um, I guess let's let's start with shame around the body, the sexual parts of our bodies as well. And, you know, how to break through the veil that is shame and mm -hmm. what's some what's some tips that we can we can start to integrate for everyone that's tuning in that really helps um, start unveiling that shame off the sexual body, as well as your own physical body moving forward in life. Mm. Well, firstly, maybe sort of identifying or, or finding out how we identify with shame. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite a strong emotion. Like for me personally. When I think of shame and having shame about something or my body or, or whatever it is, it's almost like a feeling of, of re really deep unworthiness, not good enough, not worthy. Like shame, yeah. I think, is one of the strongest emotions that we can feel um, and quite paralyzing, quite crippling. So, um, yeah. What's been your process, your evolution through shame, right? And that's a very, that's a man-made emotion, by the way. Um, yeah. And so what's been, yeah, what's been your evolution through shame? Okay. So I think like most women, um, it, it was probably something that started very young, um, just around maybe just nudity, just when you were younger and, and, you know, that it wasn't okay to show certain body parts or, you know, as a teenage girl, um, just simply seeing things like models in magazines and, you know, the airbrushing or the way that they look so perfect and how I didn't represent that. Um, anything from, yeah, like just the shape of my legs, the size of my breasts to yeah. hair. So it's looking like just uh, pubic hair, underarm hair, leg hair. Um, I remember being teased in year seven or eight by a girl who bullied me quite a bit about shaving my legs. So I'd started shaving because I'd felt shameful about having hair, but then I was bullied for having started shaving. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. you can't win, almost. <laughs> like, and then who was I doing that for anyway? Like, mm -hmm. so shame tends to sort of really, I feel, um, it's, what's the word? Mm, Would you say even like cripple our sense of being in touch with our sexual selves. Yeah, distort was the word I was looking for. It almost distorts that whole, like, what are we even doing something for? Shame can really distort our idea of um, the reason or the reason behind why we even do something. So, um, yeah, my sort of evolution through that was, well, feeling it to start with. And obviously yeah. I didn't identify 
with any of that um, earlier on. Like I just bought into how I should look, um, how mm-hmm. people wanted me to look, not how I wanted to feel. Um, yeah. And then, you know, coming through into sort of, I guess, puberty and um, see- seeing pornography for the first time, I know a lot of women can relate to this and it's the same for men is how genitals look in pornography. So yes. we've got, you know, on for men, we've got the size issue comes up. Um, mm-hmm. And for women, it's just the look. It's like, you know, most um, pornos, the women are it's completely smooth, you know, no hair. Um, they have often surgery, labiaplasties to remove parts of their vagina. It's basically genital mutilation so that it looks all neat and tidy and, you know, and at one stage I remember wanting that. I remember like considering having a labiaplasty. I'd read about it. I I remember, you know, Dolly magazine, the Dolly doctor, you know, ask Dolly doctor or whatever and women's writing in about the size of their lips. It's their vagina lips. It's just, yes. I don't know how it became a thing. Probably porn, I guess, but Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's so much shame in that. That's sort of my, I know a lot of women can relate to that, my personal journey through that. And then, you know, I guess it wasn't until really the last, like I'm 33 now, probably been sort of hitting around 30 that I really started to realize this is, this is bullshit. You know, <laughs> this is my <laughs> body. It's perfect the way it is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And in that, in that discovery of that perfection, um, what can, you know, what can be, what can come out from that? You know, is it, is it like in terms of, cause we're, you know, we'll, t- we'll touch base more on the pornography side of things for both men and women, but also on the other mm-hmm. side of things, now that we're out of shame, now that we are in touch with our bodies and for women as well, like you mentioned at the start that most women haven't even explored down there and touched themselves, um, mm. you know, and that to me seems a bit mind boggling, but I can't yeah. really wrap my head fully around that. So if you can speak to that a little more and then also, um, yeah, just pleasure, I guess, self-pleasure. And you could look at it as masturbation, but also just the presence and the love that you have for your own body and how sacred that is. Mm. So for me personally, I, I wasn't so much someone who never really looked or touched. Um, mm-hmm. I was aware of how I looked down there. Um, I did touch myself. Like self-pleasure was something I started doing when I was younger, um, yeah. although you know, in a way, I didn't really know what I was doing. Obviously, you don't get any guidance on this. And there's yeah. no right or wrong way. Um, but it was definitely goal orientated, which we can discuss as well. But um, yeah. yeah, in terms of like, I've heard stories um, for of women that just, yeah, like they, they've never, like I've heard stories of women that don't get naked in front of mirrors, just because, mm. of how, you know, they don't, it, it's a quick thing of get undressed in the shower, out of the shower, like if they're having sex with their partner, there's no lights on, they're under the covers, that sort of thing. Um, mm. But Yeah, I, I would really recommend to all women, if you've never done it, to get a, a mirror, a handheld mirror, and have a look. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, it really is. Uh, I feel like in high school you should be given a book of vaginas to have a look at so you can see that everyone is completely different and unique. Uh, mm. you know, I feel like maybe you can comment on whether guys sort of see each other a bit more in that way whether that's just through sports or you know locker rooms or whatever maybe it's more likely for you to see each other naked but for women at least in australia we're quite prudish and everyone gets changed in in the toilet cubicle or under their towel or something like that so you know it certainly doesn't help mm, doesn't help in the process yeah and just you know um <laughs> There's a lot to be said for on men's end of things as well in terms of our own genitals and, and you know, and pornography's influence in that. I don't feel the the moment to speak to that right quite yet. So we're continuing more mm-hmm. to the, the women's side of the journey as well. Mm-hmm. And um, so we've kind of touched on shame and, you know, in Australia, a bit of the culture around that. And, and, the, and I really want to keep unpacking and discovering more of um, perhaps parts of ourselves that we don't really get to discuss openly, like especially on a live like this, Facebook for everyone tuning in and for the mm. men's side of things as well. Um, just more in, in touch with the, the power that you talk about in terms of getting more in touch with your yoni and the power that comes from that. Yeah, for sure. I think that like any body part, um, when you become disconnected from it, um, there's like almost a stagnation that occurs. Um, mm-hmm. So 
for women to not be in touch with their genitals, with their vagina, their yoni, um, you just have to, I mean, you just really have to look at the, the incidence of really bad period symptoms like PMS. Everyone thinks that's normal. It's just a normal thing to get. It's not true. Um, mm. It's stuck energy. Um, and again, we've explored this in ISTA recently about how we move emotions and energy. It's the same thing with PMS. There's like a build each month. Um, but aside from that, we've got a lot of women having fertility issues. We've got a lot of women that have endometriosis, polycystic ovaries. Um, I personally had endometriosis. So I feel like my disconnect with being feminine um, was probably at the core of that. I was quite a, like a tomboy. I didn't really want to be a woman. I didn't, you know, I really resented it. I resented that I was female. I resented my periods. Um, so that disconnect you know that not accepting who i am um mm. it, i believe was what led me to have really painful periods to have endometriosis so um yeah it's different for everyone but it's that the, that disconnect creates a, a stagnation in energy um and like when when you have that physically that's going to come out in some way so for a woman to not to be connected to her um, her sex sort of area, that whole sort of pelvic area, um, it can potentially create just like a weakening. So a lot of women, even younger women these days, are having urinary incontinence. Everything in that area is just kind of weak. There's no tone to it. There's no energy there because they're almost mm. like just almost like ignoring it, I suppose. They're either hating on it or resenting it, you know, like mm. a lot of women resent their periods they don't go anywhere. That's how we create life. If we didn't have them, no one would be here. So yeah, it's really trying to find that for me, it was finding that relationship, really owning it and really enjoying having a period now, having that release each month. Yeah. That can be a powerful thing. You know, you can actually sort of meditate with that and let go of things that you don't want to have anymore each month, whether that's conditions, limiting beliefs, things that you just got that don't serve you anymore. You can journal that down. You can let it go. You know, you can burn it when you get your period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah wow. We're, we're, we're stepping into the space now of like um, transformation in the sense of combining, you know, something that's a very natural process, um, taking ownership of that process and then combining that with things to let go of. And, and um, yeah, let's, uh, let's really get into debunking some of the myths, like the myth, the myths that you hear and, and things around that, um, both for the, the women's side and, and the men's side, but more importantly, the women's side here too, for all the men tuning in as well as the women. Like what are some, you know, growing up or even currently that you're hearing in your spectrum of, of influence about the myths that are coming that you can debunk and even your own experience of breaking through and being more in touch with that connection? Mm. Um, so you mean myths as in to do with, um, I kind of, I thought of straight away like that I touched on that things like PMS and really painful or having period pain at all really is normal. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't believe it is. Yeah. Um, I don't believe anything that's a natural process in your body. Uh, I don't think it should be uncomfortable and painful and something that you really resent and fight. I, mm. It's not like, I don't believe we're built to be that way, to suffer in that way. So um, like I said, I feel like it's a disconnect. So, um, yeah, pain, period pain. I just don't think it's really something that naturally we should be suffering from. Um, yeah. Other myths. Um, hmm. Even just discoveries, even discoveries that's empowered you on your journey and your relationship to your yoni. Well, I think going back to how it looks, just that myth that, anything other than what I have is, you know, unacceptable. <laughs> um, yeah. Finally getting to see sort of as it becomes more um, something now like that women are becoming more aware of is that, you know, there is no um, standard way to look. And there's because mm. of the internet, we have access to more resources to see pictures or paintings or representations of vaginas mm. and in all their different glory. So I know... Um, a big one people might be familiar with is the um, Mona, the art gallery in Tasmania that has a wall of vaginas that have been cast in um, plaster from women. Mm -hmm. So you can go and look at all different shapes. Um, just something, yeah, like that. So 
Um, that that one for me, I guess, was pretty big. Seeing like finally seeing evidence because it's so hidden. You don't see, like I said, yeah. you don't see other women's bodies really. Everyone sort of hides it. Um, another thing I did, which was really empowering, was uh, nude yoga with a friend of mine um, from Perth, Rosie Rees, and she travels around Australia. She's actually in Amsterdam at the moment doing it. So she does yeah. nude yoga with women just so that they can see each other, it, like just really see each other and realise that no one's that airbrushed model of the magazine. And potentially if they are, they're the most self-conscious person there. So, you know, we wow. all have we all have hang-ups. Like the, the woman you look at and think is absolutely gorgeous to die for is probably the one that's suffering the most with body image. Yeah. So quite, yeah. Big time. It's actually quite a interesting perspective to look from because even in the sense that she is what should we call quote unquote like drop dead gorgeous the ideal x y mm. and z but because of that there's an intimidation factor so no one actually comes up and validates that to a point of like true connection because they're, they're yeah. almost intimidated by it and there's a mm. huge disconnect for for her to fully step in and, and like you said it could be the most self-conscious person there i know that's the case too from a lot of men in the gym that look the most ripped yeah. they're actually fueling that by what's fueling that a lot sometimes is this very self-conscious inner place that's like if i don't look this way i can't accept myself when well, others mm. couldn't accept me either mm. yeah mm. absolutely mm. yeah let's um yeah let's get into the pleasure the pleasure side of things um in terms of yeah, you could say self-pleasure, masturbation, these sort of mm. areas. Yeah, so another thing I think for me was the, the realisation um, that self-pleasure, which is a word or two words I like to use more so than masturbation, because um, masturbation to me kind of almost the conditioning implies that it's, it's, it has a goal, like you're, you're going to do whatever you do, it's sort of a procedure and then you're going to have an orgasm and then, you know, maybe go to sleep or something. It's like, it's not very conscious. It's sort of goal driven. Um, right. Where sort of t hearing people talk about self pleasure is like one, it doesn't actually have to be sexual in any way. And two, it doesn't even have to have a goal. Like you don't have to have an orgasm. It's about getting pleasure from your body and it's about being in your body. It's not a distraction. It's just the enjoyment of your body as it is. So that mm. could be, you know, self-massage. It could be um, touching your genitals. It could be breath work. It could be stretching, dance. Like, mm. I think that was a big thing for me and it almost takes the pressure off as well. Right, right. The pressure off goal-orientated slash performance-orientated mm. sexuality in a sense. And I really want to speak to, you know, a lot of people don't recognize the biggest sex organ we have is the skin, mm. right? It's, it's in our yeah. entire body and touching that. So I'll just, I'll just briefly touch into the men's side of things in, in my personal experience as well as kind of what my philosophy is in terms of the masturbation and self-pleasure from the men's side of things. It's like, cool, through the pornography, through say, I'm in my, you know, I'm just getting into high school, I'm discovering what masturbation is and then my education to that pornography is really implying that I'm disconnecting. So all I'm doing is I'm getting in say, maybe it's in the toilet and I'm watching porn and I'm being mindful that someone's in the house. So I'm keeping quiet as best I can. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting myself to, to not only visually see every possible beautiful women, you know, like desensitizing me visually to, mm. you know, a woman's body as if it's just like they're on demand and all the different types you can imagine to a point too now it's like okay the way i'm masturbating is actually just really quick and disconnected not connected to breath not to get connected to sound because i'm watching yeah. so it's like quick pulse it out get it done it's over and done with and that's what i'm teaching my system every time i go into masturbation yeah. I'm, i have no connection to the skin no connection to which women um in my opinion have a good um this like have a good association with getting into story getting into fantasy I don't think um, a lot of that's missing in terms of men, as if we don't have fantasy or story. It's like, boom, 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 and it's done. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 yeah. and it's done. And that's repeated over. So guess what, man? When we get to the, we get, you know, we're about to have sex with a woman, we've totally lost the whole foreplay thing. We've totally mm -hmm. lost exploring the body, all the skins. And all we're thinking is this goal-oriented, boom, 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 done. And that's <laughs> what we've taught our system. And the woman's yeah. going like, this isn't 
done. Like if, if this is what you think yeah. fulfilling sex is, then I'm either A, going to fake it, B, pretend like that was amazing, or C, just yeah. feel super disconnected. And men even themselves are disconnected to the whole part. Um, I have so much passion to speak about this for men, but I feel like I don't want to also take this, we're going to take it back, swing it back to, um, yeah, to women and um, more too for, let's, let's just drop in a little education too for, for men, for women. Like say, say you're representing the entire, <laughs> um, entire female um, gender and saying, okay, here's a message we could throw out to men. Um, mm -hmm. And personally, I would say the message, if I was in the women's side, tapping into my feminine would be, slow down <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that came up i was like there's no rush like yeah. you know there's okay there's a place for quickies sure but yeah. generally like what you've just described that sort of hard fast quick almost like hidden and just unconscious sort of goal orientated procedure it's like right. does anyone really want to have sex like that really like or, or just dropping in, that's all they know, and there's not the other side of, like, that's yeah. to them. For, for most men, as a very, mm. like, that's what they think sex is. Like, yeah, that's like, so a, actually, <laughs> this is a great sex, but I don't yes. know any better than the spectrum outside of Good it. I don't even point. know what multiple orgasms are, what that, you know what I mean? So, um, mm -hmm. anyway, continue continue on your side, what, what you'd say to the majority yeah. of men, as well as exploring orgasmic experiences. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, and that's such a good point you made. Like when you often when you realize there's another option, you're like, oh, what? Like, and maybe, yeah, maybe people just don't realize there's another option. So, yeah, I feel like, and that also sort of ties into the, people will call it the patriarchal society, but it, it is, it's a masculine driven way we live in, living where everything is acting, doing hard, fast. So, yeah, nice. women, the feminine quality of a woman, you know, or, or the feminine in anyone is softer, slower, cooler. So like men are like the fire, but then the women are like the, the cooling, the water, the flow, you know, and bringing the two together is amazing. You know, it's like the, you get the wave that you can ride. There's nothing wrong with having faster, more active parts of self-pleasure or of sex, but then mm -hmm. dropping it back again to prolong that pleasure. So bringing breath in and like mm -hmm. you say, bringing the, Touch, bringing other parts of the body. I mean, you can have an orgasm from any part of your body, and yeah. and people are I'm sure people are not aware of that. But um, just starting that out, men that are watching that that goes for us too. It is, yeah, that is the thing. That is the thing. We can Absolutely. have orgasmic experiences other than just ejaculating. So for men that don't know about this, don't worry. I'll probably drop another game live, or a game changes live on this. If not, I feel like there's a program that I'm going to be eventually moving out, or at least a book. But yeah, there is there is another side of the spectrum for men as well. And so, you know, you sit there for, for women and we can actually, I'm feeling like this is where this is flowing, but we can talk about, you know, in your felt sense as well, uh, the orgasmic experiences or at least the levels or different experiences for women. Um, because I know some women haven't actually been in touch with that side, like haven't experienced no. an or orgasm, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, there's a lot of women out there that have never experienced any type of orgasm, as you say. And that's just, oh, it's a crime, really. You know? It like, is a crime, absolutely. <laughs> um, but then I feel like also there's a bit of, um, I've, I've noted, noticed recently some shaming going on for certain types of orgasms too, which I find a bit bizarre. Um, and I yes. kind of bought into it at one stage. So people saying like your, your general sort of clitoral orgasm for a woman is like, oh, you know, like you, you don't want to be having those. You want to be having you know, uh, vaginal orgasms, which, you know, take a bit of work and they certainly take a bit of time and connection. And if you don't have a really intimate connection with yourself firstly and then your partner, it's going to be hard to achieve that. So, um, yeah, back to the um, that notion of, yeah, what you're saying with, um, with like the feminine speaking, I feel like, yeah, like I said, the slowing down and, and maybe the, the communication, the really sort of witnessing each other as well, um, you know, <laughs> Hang on a minute. Okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna drop this in for the guys. Communication, guys. Let me just say, we don't have to know everything. Ask. Mm -hmm. We don't have yeah. to know what the heck we're supposed to be doing here. Ask. Educate yourselves. Have that communication. We're talking in terms of a partner here specifically, mm -hmm. but even I guess even to yourself, ask body. Yeah. What do I want? I'm pleasuring myself. You yeah. know, is is yeah. there a potential outside of let's just say in, in masturbation and, and self pleasure outside of porn to 
really start discovering parts of myself and discovering other orgasmic experiences, incorporating breath, incorporating sound. Like for most men, uh, I would imagine there's not a lot of sound in terms of the sex, like the, the sound is mm. missing because why? Because you're watching porn and that has all the sound there. It's like, why would you add sound to yeah. sound? It's like you're competing yeah. with this amazing sounds that are going on uh, without vocalizing them. But it's like, cool, getting in touch with sound. And yes, yeah, so coming back to it, men, you, we don't have to know it all. We can, we can ask and, and actually being specific and asking and like getting in tune specifically what, you know, what your partner or, you know, the woman that you're sleeping with or whatever you're having a sexual experience once. Because it might be mm. just as simple as like eye gazing to a touch of the skin into like just holding presence for each other and that can shift and create an mm. orgasmic experience. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Anytime where I'm with my partner and I'm not feeling a connection or something happens or I just want to drop back into breath and that's how I get it back. It's like literally I need him to be up next to me. I feel his heart and we just breathe together and that just that presence, feeling that presence. But like you just said, if, if you don't know yourself and you don't know what you like, it's going to be very hard for someone else to to please you. And, and really, yeah. realistically, no one else pleases you. Like, it's, it's you. You need to have that intimate pleasure relationship with yourself. Um, no one else is there to do that for you. Um, and I feel for women, too, a really mm -hmm. big thing is to move towards pleasure and not have that idea in your head of what something should look like. Cause that was a big thing for me for a long time was me getting into that masculine sort of, I have to do this now, or I have to, you know, um, please my man in this way, or I should make this sound or, you know, it's like, that's not what it's about. It's about yeah. your own pleasure and moving towards that. And that the guy will respond to that as well. Like, you know, yeah. when you start feeling pleasure and showing it authentically, it's just like he's going to follow with you. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, too, tuning in, it's like you, you know, you don't have to perform either and you don't have to have this as a goal like, oh, she should be experiencing this now and, mm. and, and this should be moving into that. It's actually when you get in touch with your own desires and your own pleasure, um, what really turns you on as well. And, and then the, the love plays out where you're actually really just loving each other first and foremost. Mm with you know in unionship so it's like cool i'm actually in you know this opportunity for you to give give love and then receive love but first and foremost is having the idea of like oh what you know what do i really like and how, what what turns me on and 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 how do i feel in this space and, and connecting back to breath hey chris thanks we are legends if anyone wants to drop in comments too along the way mm -hmm. we'll open up the space for questions um yeah so continuing on with our conversation, <laughs> is there anything you want to um, add to that? Mm. So feeling, oh, the sound. I like that you brought up the sound. Um, I, personally, for me, that's always been a big block um, because yeah. the only sound that I had heard that I thought I should be making again was from pornography. Um, and to me, that wasn't authentic. I was like, it doesn't feel right to make sounds like that that's not what I want to do so I just kind of wouldn't make any sound um, yeah. and then I had fear of being judged for it um, but the more I started to experiment with that and it's really only been a recent thing for me to really um, sort of find my voice I guess um, yeah. within within pleasure and sex it's quite phenomenal how that can sort of almost open an, an energy channel through the body um, the Absolutely. throat and the neck area is really connected to the pelvis. And this is not just like a, a chakra thing, an energy thing. This is actually like every Cairo will tell you that when someone's pelvis goes out, their neck goes out. Like there's, it's innervated in the same way. So um, throat, noise, expression, breath has a lot to do with the opening, the softening um, of the pelvis, especially for women. Mm. Yeah, especially for women. And same, so in terms of uh, tuning into your own sound, because your sexual sound might not come through, like your, your, your sound of pleasure might feel like constricted and might feel like, oh, I, I um, feel embarrassed or judged for doing that. So to get in touch with that, what I have personally discovered for myself that works really well is, you know, in your self-pleasure time, get in touch with that sound because that mm. sound is actually not, not only breath, but it's vibration, it's frequency coming out in relationship to the pleasure that you're experiencing. So it's yeah. also a good indication when you hear your partner having authentic sound come out, mm. that's like, it's an invigorating feeling of like, wow, this is what's, you know, that's almost like a permission to continue forward. And there's, 
you know, there's like a subtle dance there. So yeah, just inviting sound on both ends, both the masculine and the feminine. And also being aware that, you know, we all have masculine and feminine in. There's a time for men we can surrender as well. And as women, they can surrender yes. and they can take on the more masculine role. Yeah. And that, you know, being in tune with that as well is, 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 is key. Um, wicked. So I guess we've, we've kind of uncovered into, you know, <laughs> growing up, the shame that's pushed around our genitals, mm -hmm. around our sexuality. We've uncovered um, sort of de devailing that, um, yeah. the evolution through that, particularly in how it's supposed to look, how we're supposed to perform. Um, the mm. distortion through pornography and you know everyone out there let's not take away from pornography pornography is a thing we don't have any charge around it it's just yeah. to mean to have the awareness that mm. you know pornography can serve a, a great space for some people if they're very in touch but it can also yeah. be a very unconscious um, sort of conditioning or a, an effect where we think that that has to be the result or it's sex sex mm. is pornography which the yeah. spectrum of sex actually yeah. extends way beyond pornography pornography represents a small percentage of you know the pleasure or the experience that sex is mm, absolutely yeah and look there's more um i haven't actually don't know of anyone doing it but i have heard there's been a lot more conscious pornography coming out there's okay. been people that have been you know on the same sort of path as us thinking you know wanting to empower themselves sexually in, in every way in their life going hang on, there's something missing here. I'd really like to provide this for people, a more conscious pornography for them, something more realistic. So right. that's fantastic as well. Yeah. Yeah. And also just being in touch with the conscious pornography that can be inside of your head, right? So uh it's like, cool, I don't need, um, you know, this to play out. I can play out something in my head, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a fantasy in my head, a story, getting in touch with the full play, the, the details, or maybe it's just a felt sense of, and, yeah. um, you know, slowing down and, and really getting in touch with that part of yourself is, is, is super special, especially showing up in a relationship or, um, yeah, in, in intimate love with another. And um, cool. Well, could you give like your three top tips um, for like empowering your yoni, um, so to mm -hmm. speak? Like, you know, this yeah. could be your personal experience, but on, on a collective level as well. Mm. Oh, I think number one is just to, to look at it. <laughs> Literally, I yep. feel like so powerful for women to get a mirror and really take some time to explore, have a look, touch, really sort of drop in and be present with it um, mm -hmm. inside and out. Like um, a lot of online courses that I've kind of seen and that around Yoni's recommend that as well, because I think it's, you, you can't have a part of your body that's completely unknown to you. It's crazy, yeah. right? Probably more um, aware of, you know, the inside of your mouth than, your vagina which is kind of crazy so yeah, that's like really. number one is like let's get to to know her that part of us let's mm. and, be more, and be more gentle with it you know the the judgments on it let's stop um okay hair removal can be very personal but tearing hair off hurts it's traumatizing it's not really necessary really like it can cause women to end up having all sorts of troubles like um, thrush and things. So sort of something to think about is that just being gentle with that area, not deodorizing it. It's supposed to have a smell. Everyone has a unique smell. Uh, it's pheromones. It's how you attract a partner. So yeah, yeah, like getting in touch with it, touching her, looking at her and then being gentle. So really dropping in, not sort of stressing that whole area with harsh chemicals, products, are certainly mm. not cutting parts of it off. Like, mm. no, like, no way. Come on, yeah. Um, mm. And then yeah, thirdly, yeah, yeah. Mm, I would say it's really interesting that sort of to drop, if you can end up sort of finding a connection with that space, with that sacral chakra or that womb space for women, um, it's a really powerful place to find your yeses and your noes. For, for anything, any decision in life, not just sex, but yeah. most importantly, yes, sex and even self-pleasure. And before you let anyone enter you or even enter yourself, making sure there's a yes there. So for women to really be able to find that connection and drop into the yes and they know and what it feels like from that space. So that can be something you can do through uh, a meditation. Um, I can probably, there's a, 
a couple of people online that I can probably find details for we can share later. But yeah, learning to drop into that, I'll call it womb space, even though I know like I used to have a lot of charge around womb. Um, it's, it's a word women can have charge with, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's that space. It's that whole sort of just, pelvic area. Just out of curiosity, um, when you say charge around womb, a lot of women can have charge around that. Why is that, um, that the, the case or at least in your experience, why was that the case, well, the charge there? Yeah, for me, it was because I was disowning my femininity. Um, it was that I resented being a woman. I didn't want a womb. I didn't ever want children. I saw being feminine and childbearing and all of that as being weak. I, the vulnerability I saw as weak. It feels terrible when I say that now, but that's what it was for me. Um, it was like, I just didn't, I didn't see that like the more feminine women that, you know, had children and were having babies and were, you know, I was like, ugh, you know, there was a repulsion to that, that whole womb thing and holding something in your womb. And, and it's like, really, it's not about that. Like the womb space and the creation is about anything you want to create. It's not just about babies. So, and like, yeah. do you, me you don't mess with women, with children. <laughs> They're fierce, man. Like, holy cow. So yeah, uh, it's been a really big journey for me that. And um, yeah, yeah the, the moment I kind of realized I felt like that about f femininity and about women and being a woman, that it was like this weakness that I couldn't be a part of. And I so therefore I had to be so masculine in my life. That was massive. Mm. Like that was massive in terms of me shifting the problems I had with the endometriosis and all the pain yeah. in my period. Can you, yeah. can you speak to once the shift occurred, what, what started to show up in the integration of that? Mm. So um, that was when I first found out about yoni eggs. Um, yes. And I found out about a woman called Kim Anami, um, mm -hmm. which we can drop something in later about her as well. She's pretty amazing. Um, so I really started to explore what my issue was with femininity, where it came from. And the shifts I saw for me were well, within my relationship, um, the, the pleasure that I started to get from sex increased, like the presence that I had with my partner, the pressure dropped. Um, okay. Okay. I, this is, this is huge because we've got not only getting in touch with, you know, the womb space and, and making your yeses and nos come from that space. Mm, and especially yeah. in terms of uh, intimacy and a partner and, and, and being able to, to know when actually, let's just check in with my womb space. This is actually a no right now in this moment with this person. And honoring yeah. that no is, is tremendous. Yeah. It shows your body um, that, you're, you know, that you're honoring that part of yourself as mm. well. And then now you're mentioning you know, yoni eggs and, and that sort of style. Um, like, can you speak to that more? And I, I do realize you know, I would love for you to drop in into um, the business that you have around that uh, as well. Yeah, so um, basically I went and I had a, a massage with a friend. It was a, a Thai abdominal massage, Chini Sang. And she couldn't work on my womb space and my uterus because I had a, an implant, a Marina IUD for birth control. And in that moment, I just knew like I had to get it out. It felt to me like it's a foreign body. It felt like I had a blockage in there. Um, yeah. So from there, and she also mentioned Kim and Army and Jade Eggs. So from that moment, um, I went, I had my IUD removed. I started to naturally track my cycle for birth control. And I, I got a jade egg. So a jade egg um, or a yoni egg is basically a crystal egg. I've got one here. They're just a, an egg made of crystal that a woman inserts into her vagina and does, um, well, you can do anything with it, really. You can just connect with it in there or you can do like targeted exercises which will tone and strengthen the pelvic floor. But really at the core, what you're doing is really bringing loving attention and presence to that area. So you can get crystals of all different types. Um, yeah. Women seem to be a real popular choice is rose quartz because it's all about self-love and acceptance. So the jade egg practice was basically something that um, came about 5,000 years ago in ancient China, the Taoist tradition. The women would use jade because they held the properties of that egg in quite high regard. It was all about abundance, prosperity, luck. Um, and they believed that their overall life force um, was correlated with their sexual energy. So like sexual energy was life force energy. And they had practices mm -hmm. where they would circulate that through their body. So that's essentially the jade egg practice came from there. Um,
but at its core, I feel it's just about connection. It's about connecting with that space in a loving and present way, which not many women do. Like I said, it's like it's tearing hair off or it's like putting things in there, like without any sort of thought about whether so that there's a yes or a no, whether that's a tampon or a finger, a dildo, a penis, like it, how much consciousness is around inserting things in there. Um, that's, you know, like that's your temple. That's your temple space. That's what Yoni means, a sacred space and abode. So, um, yeah, uh, I have a business called Yoni Empower, which sells the jade eggs online. Um, oh, we will. Eggs, we will. Mm. Yeah, we, we will drop that in the description. I'll tweak the description too to add in everything that we mentioned in the links. Mm. By the way, everyone that's tuning in, if you have questions, also this is, we're, we're opening up the space for questions to be answered. Yep. Um, particularly if there was something to ask to a woman um, around, you know, genitals around. Um, yeah, this is a this is a golden opportunity for stuff to surface. And, you know, we're speaking about things that a lot of people have charged around sometimes when it comes to genital sexuality, um, the shame, stepping into owning your sexuality as well as feeling power around your desires and saying your yeses and nos moment to moment, uh, especially in relationship to, to love and, and, and being being with a you know another and, and knowing actually just checking in moment to moment I don't want to experience quite that yet you yeah. know or slow down or this is being rushed and um, there's mm -hmm. a lot to be said about that I really feel that mm. uh, the, yeah I know women will know how many times really when they think about it they've overridden that feeling that you know no or that not quite yet which is also a no mm -hmm. you know the maybe is a no it's yeah I, I had done that so many times in my life, countless times. So, yeah, mm. it, it builds up, you know, and I feel like, um, again, that can manifest as a physical ailment. Um, there's actually uh, quite a lot of women that suffer from a, a condition called um, vaginismus, which is actually a vagina that's too tight it's to the point they can't even insert a tampon in there. It's excruciating pain. And it's, I believe, mm. it's actually very connected to that not having the yeses and the noes, there's a lot more to it, but I feel like that, that would be a big part. It's like, it's almost at the point of like, there's no, there's nothing's getting in there. You know, there's that much trauma held in there. So yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And, and uh, specifically in relation to trauma being held in there, um, what a, what a crippling uh, feeling of having so much trauma in there. Do you have any, um, anything that you feel would, would help release some of that trauma out of that part of that sacred part, really, um, yeah. your temple space? Yeah, look, there's um, lots of different things I feel you could do. Um, you could certainly get some help from practitioners that do things like a yoni mapping. Um, yeah. So they can actually work with you and they may only start externally you know you can hold a lot of tension in the muscles just around the pelvis let alone inside the vagina so the jade egg practice can help the, the yoni egg practice can help with that but it may be at the point that you can't even put that in there so um, certainly any type of healers that work with women's sexual health can help to start sort of getting some of that trauma out like you may need to work with things like emotional expression tools um, journaling, just like energy workers could help with that. Like I say, body workers that focus on that area. Um, you can get small uh, wands as well, which I do stock, um, that you can almost use as like a little massage tool because a lot of women just have tension in the muscle, even if they don't. I mean, that's probably from some kind of trauma. It, it, it could be a minor trauma, you know, but um, that tension will be held in the muscle, in the tissues inside. So, um yeah, and it's a sensitive issue. Uh, it's hard because this is a taboo topic. So you think, who do I talk to about this? Um, but we're lucky we're living in a time where the conscious sex, sexuality movement, you know, it's on the rise and there's a lot of people that are specialising in it. So uh, the you know, people doing yoni massage and mapping are becoming a lot more available, which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And anyone that's tuning in that uh, can relate to any of this and feels sensitive not to drop anything in now, um, please reach out to Annalie. We're opening up the space for that as well. Um, yeah. You know, if you want to just keep the communication just just more to a private matter. Um, yeah. Yeah, look, if there's anything else that you feel compelled to, to speak to um, while we have the, uh, the live running, if you feel something that you still would like, I'd like to address that, then um, by all means, speak it. Maybe just in general about... Um sort of 
tracking down the shadow, so to speak, like we kind of spoke before we got in on here, I mentioned about in general with your, with your body or with your thoughts or your emotions, finding where the fear is, where the contraction is, not just shame, just anything that doesn't feel right and kind of coming at it with curiosity. So mm. no judgment, but bringing, bringing a, a, pre, a loving presence and awareness to that. So, yeah, if you've got a charge with a word like I had, womb, um, or even vagina, genitals, yes. look into why that is. Um, not just in a, in a gentle, curious way, like journal around it or have a discussion with someone you trust or have a Google. Like there's really a lot of people online that can help sort of there's articles like I said Kim and Ami is fantastic but there's lots of amazing women um so yeah really becoming curious and almost sort of stalking that that fear or that contraction that you have with any part of your body with you know anything Mm. yeah and that 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 contraction that space can be explored in your own time first and foremost getting in touch with yourself in relation to self-pleasure it's like where am I contracting or even fantasizing mm-hmm. about certain things? Where is that? Where am I contracting on that? Um, yeah. And, and paying attention to if you are someone that, you know, loves to self-pleasure to porn, where am I actually like my body is starting to get more and more disconnected and I'm, I'm orientated just more towards one thing. Like, it's like, cool. I just feel only connection to my penis and not the whole mm-hmm. entire body or just connection to my vagina and being disconnected from breath, from sound, from movement. So where are you actually contracting in relationship to the videos that you could be watching or even yeah. starting to fantasize um, and just be in touch with exploring certain parts of your body, words that you have charge around. It might be fuck, it might be vagina, it, it, you mm-hmm. know, it might be coming it might be whatever it is to you that just yeah. just going where where's the source of that contraction where what, yeah. what sparks that um because what that helps do is it collapses the shadow and allows you to integrate um, a more full experience in terms of sexually in terms of being in touch with your body as well yeah yeah absolutely and that's that's where the gold is that's where the growth is it's not in the comfort zone it's in those hidden places it's in that contraction um, mm. It's like you know, doing a yoga practice or any sort of movement practice where you move to the discomfort, but you do it, you know, gently and you just do it with breath and awareness. And yeah, like you say, in, in self pleasure and that, you can explore that. And, you know, and knowing that there's no right or wrong way, like it's just your way and getting in contact with that. So, again, when people. Um, when they sort of are empowered in that shadow side of themselves, especially in sexuality and it, with body and body image, they can't be controlled by media, by corporations. You know, they don't need the junk that they're being peddled. Um, yeah. they, they're sort of standing within their own centre and going, no, nah, like, you know, you, you're discerning your truth from the matter. Um, I feel yeah. like it's, it's good. We, we've got a, There's a movement of this happening, which is fantastic. So you're never alone. There's, there's plenty of people. I'm happy to talk to anyone at any time about anything to do with this. Um, but I'm yeah. not the only person. There's, there's plenty of people. Yeah. Yeah, I loved, um, you know, that loving curiosity that you spoke about in, in, in relationship to anywhere that you're contracting or any parts of yourself that you feel ashamed about. It's like actually just having that curiosity and that loving presence as well as that non-judgmental um, perspective on things and you know if you're in a relationship right now that's a beautiful space to start exploring with your partner in through communication authentic communication and be, mm-hmm. like even moment to moment whether it's sex or whether it's um you know just intimacy in general where you feel yourself contract a good exercise is to have you and your partner looking at each other's eyes and working to different parts of the body where you feel yourself actually i'm contracting here or when you're reaching yeah. in that part or or when you when you're when we're, um, you know, fucking like that, that actually makes me feel disconnected from my body and I don't feel yeah. safe. And being yeah. able to communicate that in the moment is tremendous and, and, and getting very clear once connected into your womb space or even guys having presence to when you feel that there's a disconnection there, even to your own body that you're like, actually, I'm not in touch authentically. and Maybe I don't even want this. So being able to be in touch with your yeses and nos and communi- communicating that moment to moment because there is no wrong or right way of going about this. It's about yeah. the experience of like, hang on a minute, we have this shared moment together, let's stay in the what is, not what it's supposed to be, but in the what yeah. is. Because in yeah, the what is, is exactly. when we can be vulnerable, is when we can be ourselves, and it's also where we can share the deepest connection in terms of 
um, love, in terms of eros, in terms of that sort of um, that flow of things. And that could be one by yourself to yourself, which is huge. I recommend it for anyone to start exploring that and having that as like a daily practice, even like self pleasure for yourself. Um, and then two, also with the partner, which is tremendous. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And that flows into life, obviously, when you start to find those boundaries with yourself, with your partner, within <laughs> sex or intimacy. Um, yep. It just opens you up into life, into more creativity, into more like having your back. Like it's okay to stop mid whatever you're doing sex wise when something doesn't feel right or burst into tears or whatever you need like there's anything yes. goes it's having your own back like yeah i don't know how many times i've burst into tears in the middle of sex so i've just stopped my partner mid whatever he's doing like and he's fine with that he's on board i know that not everyone feels maybe that connection in a relationship um and it's something you've got to work towards but i think yeah opening that dialogue and yeah it's important you know for deeper levels yeah. of intimacy absolutely so just in the in the relationship to deeper um, levels of intimacy even if it is someone you're you know if you're in still the space of just you know you might be fresh out of high school or in high school in the space of one night stands mm -hmm. as a thing for you um it's yeah. like being able to communicate um that like your intention moving into or maybe things are super hot and, and, and heavy and things are just kicking off great and things are working but being very attuned to um, when you might notice contraction or when the mm. thing doesn't feel right. Like it, I'm feeling, yeah. when, when am I taking over just doing this out of like the sake of doing it versus the sake yeah. of where I actually feel it. So just being mindful of that. And, yeah. and you know, that could be a subtle thing. It could take ages or it could take a very, like for me, it feels very natural, but for some people that might not feel natural because they're so um, programmed or conditioned through say pornography, that it's like a sequence. It's like, cool, we get to that part, then we go to the blowjob part. Then, then we right. hit the, you know, the fucking part, <laughs> and then at the end, um, it's the coming part. So it's like, yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, boom, like yeah. sex is being compartmentalized. Procedure. Like, yeah. procedure, goal orientated. If I don't hear this, this, and this, then it, it can't, you know, this isn't obviously. So it's like dropping that paradigm or dropping that story of how sex should be and exploring your own story. Yes, gosh, it's so important. Um, and I find too, if I ever feel like, for me, I do recognize that, like, I'm kind of not here. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's bringing the senses back in. That's where sensuality comes from, using the senses. Yep. So bringing in like, and it works for people too, when you're just feeling anxious, when you're not really in your body, come back to what can you smell? Can you see? What can you taste? What can you touch? That mm. will bring you back into your body. So it might be as simple as doing that when you feel like you're a bit sort of, maybe you've checked out during sex or life yeah. in general, but coming back to your senses. Yeah. 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 I feel um, this is a good time to just uh, bring things to a close. Mm -hmm. If anyone that is watching has a, has a question, um, you know, drop it in now. I, like I said, if everything that you, if you resonated with anything or you felt contraction towards anything, really drop it in and, um, you know, drop a message to myself or Anna Lee. And um, for those that are just tuning in now, we're going to wrap things up. And please, I invite you to watch the whole thing again, because um, we covered a lot of good territory that most people might have charged around. <laughs> and yeah. I feel honored to, to go through that with you, Annalie. And that was, that was beautiful to explore that together and, and to speak about some things that, like you said, are sometimes taboo or sometimes just not talked about. Yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful. I could talk about this all day. I love it. So Me too. I really, yeah. yeah, I encourage anyone that has any questions, please, like I, I'm available. I love it. There's nothing that's off topic that's not, you know, um, welcome. Just, yeah, we've got to talk about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we will. And we'll uh, mention some more in more game changes along the way. So I hope this mm -hmm. changed the way you could play, you know, play life in terms of your own relationship to, your, you know, your sexuality side of things and your self-pleasure and any, you know, unveiling any shame that you have around your body and that it needs mm -hmm. to be this way or it needs to look this way as far as, um, yeah, or in terms of like pleasure and, and, and sex, and it needs to be performed this way or this needs to be this result driven. It's dropping all of that. And um, we cover a lot of that topic uh, throughout the video. So mm -hmm. yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in. And um, thank you, Ellie, this is a pleasure. Thanks, Jackson. Awesome. Hi.